Hello and welcome to our next video, Multiplying Expressions. Here we're going to have a little bit of fun by, by writing out, instead of just two sets of parentheses with terms, let's add three and then more and see what happens. How do we deal with a problem like this? Well, let's just throw some terms in here. 3x, I don't know, 2x squared, um, 2y, and then let's throw some more in, plus, I don't know, 2y plus 3, plus x plus 1 plus, I don't know, x minus 2. So how do we multiply all these terms and what's going to happen? Well, and it, before I get into this, let me just say that this strategy that we're about to use is going to produce a really long term. But that's okay. We can simplify it. And also, I want to say that, that this technique right here can apply to even longer strings. I'm going to just show this one, but you could you could easily apply this logic to even more groups of parentheses. So what do you do here? The key is, and I, I think at first this is overwhelming, because you your sense might be, and I hope you're building this intuition, that you want to take each of the pieces in here and then somehow multiply them by everything in all the other terms, which is correct in a sense, but don't forget the wonderful and awesome associative property which says, for example, that let's say you have 2 times 3 times 4. So this is much simpler, but you can think of them as inside parentheses to help understand what I'm saying. Here, when you multiply, you do 2 times 3, which is 6, and then you do 6 times 4, which is 24. Notice you don't have to do 2 times 3 and then 2 times 4. You just kind of pair these two up. You associate them together, multiply them, Take that product and then multiply it by this term right here. We're going to do the same thing in this problem, right? We don't have to multiply 3x by everything, but I'm going to kind of group these two products together, get a product, a total product, and then multiply that by this term right here. So let's get started. So what do we do? 3x times 2x squared. Well, 3 times 2 is 6. x times x squared is x to the third power. Doing well. 3x times x. Well, that's just 3x squared. 3x times 1 is itself, so it's 3x. Okay, next we do 2y times 2x squared. That's 4y. 4x squared y. Right? This is just the y and the x squared. We don't know what they are. 2y times x is, well, that's just 2xy. Or 2yx, same thing. 2y times 1 is itself, it's 2y. Okay, and then 3 times each of these terms. So 3 times 2x squared is 6x squared. 3 times x is 3x. And then 3 times 1 is 3. So before I do anything and multiply by this term right here, I'm going to simplify this down. And let's hope I can do that. So what do I do? So look for like terms. So here's a 3x. I look for other terms with just an x. And here's one right there. Add those two together, you get 6x. Great. Now here I have 2y. You want to look to see if do we have anything else with just a y. No. So we're done. It's 2y. Here's the only constant in the whole thing. So it's right there. 6x squared. Does anything else have it? Any other coefficient have x squared? Right here. So we combine those two, we get 9x squared. Great. Here we have 2xy, 4x squared y, and 6x cubed. They all, right, have no, they all have nothing that we can combine them with to simplify. So we just rewrite them. And in fact, I'm going to rewrite this, I just have to move this over here. Sorry, let's do this again. So 6x cubed cannot be simple can be combined or simplified. 4x squared y is still there. 4x squared y and 2xy cannot be simplified. The other ones could. So again, we have 3x squared and 6x squared. That's 9x squared. 3x and 3x is 6x. And then 2y all by itself and 3. Whew. Okay. That now is going to be multiplied by this term. Hang in there, 2y plus x minus 2. And our goal, again, is just to multiply all of these pieces. I'm going to make my life a little bit easier and think of it, I think, this way. This p 
piece and multiply by all of these right here, right? And then x and then the negative 2 and work that way, excuse me, instead of the other way. Just a personal preference. So 2y times 6x squared, that's 12x cubed, excuse me, 12x cubed y, right? 2 times 6 is 12, x cubed and y, we don't know what's there. 2y times this term is 8x squared y squared, y times y is y squared. 2y times 2xy, hang in there, 4xy squared. 2y times 9x squared is 18x squared y. 2y times 6x equals 12xy. 2y times 2y is 4y squared. And 2y times 3 is 6y. Keep going. Now we have x times all those terms. I'm going to write them, I'm going to try to write them beneath other terms that, that I might be able to simplify because I'll clearly will run out of room quickly. So x times 6x cubed, well that has no analogy here, or no, no like pair. It's just 6x to the fourth, so I'll write it right there. x times 4x cubed, <coughs> excuse me, x times 4x squared y is going to be 4 x cubed y. So we can combine these two, that's nice. x times 2xy is 2x squared y. And I have an x squared y there, so it's 2x squared y. x times 9x is squared is 9x cubed. And we have no, no nothing to match that, no like term. So 9x cubed. And then x, got that one, x times 6x is going to be 6x squared. So do I have an x squared term alone? No, I do not. Surprising. So where should I write that? Oh, boy. I, I'm running out of room here, so I'll write it up here. Plus 6x squared. <coughs> Sorry. So that's, that's a part of this term. Don't be confused. These are all little pieces that we're adding in to make one enormous term, but we can handle it. So 6x squared. And then 2xy. That's the product of these two. And here I have 12xy, so we can combine those two, 2xy. And then x times 3, so 3x. So just an x term all by itself, and I don't have that yet, so write it up here, 3x. And now for the grand finale, negative 2 times all of these terms. So negative 2 times 6x cubed. Well, that's going to be negative 12x cubed, and here's our pair, negative 12x cubed. Negative 2 times 4x squared y is going to be negative 8x squared y. So negative 8x squared y. That pairs up nicely right here. Uh, so we're done with that one. Negative 2 times 2xy is negative 4xy. So that's going to go right here, negative 4xy. Negative 2 times 9x squared is negative 18x squared. And that has a pair right here. So negative 18x squared. That's plus 6x squared. Okay. Negative 2 times 6x is negative 12x. So we have negative 12x. Sorry about the room here. Plus 3x. Those will pair up. And again, your goal, if you have paper here, is to line the pairs up. Otherwise, you go crazy trying to keep track of all this. Negative 2 times 2y is negative 4y. That's going to pair up right here. And negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. That's a constant all by itself. Wow, so we've got all this stuff, but we can do it. We can simplify. And we're trying to fit it along the bottom here. I'm feeling it's kind of crazy, but we can do it. So what do we do? Well, I want to cross out as I go. Otherwise, I'll definitely lose track. So here is our first like term. 12x cubed y's and then 4x cubed y's is 16, right? 12 and 4 is 16, x cubed y. This had no like, like terms, so it's still the same. 8x squared, y squared. Cross this out, cross this out. 4xy squared, we couldn't combine that with anything, so it's just still 4xy squared. Now these three, it looks complicated, but really you're just adding 18, 2, and, and 2, and then taking 8 away, right? 18 is 2 is 20, take 8 away is 12, so it's 12, 
x squared y. So you can almost ignore these variables because the 18, the 2, and the negative 8 count the number of groups of these variables. So you can just add 18 and 2 to get 20, and again, then take 8 away to get 12. These are gone. Here, same idea. I'm going to almost ignore the xy's. 12 and 2 is 14. Take 4 away, that's 10. So 10 xy. Don't want that. 4y squared. Had no other like term with it. Plus 4y squared. Don't want that. And then here, 6y minus 4y is just 2y, right? That's 2y. And then, now to work with all this sloppy mess over here, 6x x to the 4th is all by itself. So it's 6x to the 4th. Done. These two terms right here, which I set up terribly, but it's 9x cubed minus 12x cubed. That's negative 3x cubed. Done with those. Done with this. Now we have, oh, I hope I can fit this here, negative 18x squared plus 6x. Well, negative 18 plus 6 is negative 12. So it's negative 12x squared. Done with that. Negative 12x plus 3x, well, negative 12 plus 3, right, is, is what? What's well, negative 9, right? Negative 9x. And then, yes, I made it. Minus 6. Wow. Okay, cross it out, cross it out. So you can see why I only did one of these problems in this video, and it's, you know, it becomes super tedious at some point, you're just organizing all this stuff, and I really hope I didn't lose track of anything, or lose track of you, right, in here, because my writing is all over the place. But, you know, when you're working through a problem like this, just remember your goal is to multiply every little piece or term that's separated by addition or subtraction, so we have one, two, three pieces at this point, by all of the pieces in here. Make sure you set up all the combinations. Okay, so I hope this helped.